My name is Ilko and uh, I was invited by the students to uh, share a bit of my story on how Instagram changed my life, really. It did. Um, I also want to get into the future of mobile photography uh, after I talk a bit about myself. Uh, so, that's me, Ilko Bosch. Oh, okay, well. Um, for me, Instagram started when I bought my first iPhone, it was this uh, 3GS, and like most people, I went to the App Store and checked for some nice apps, and I'm Dutch, so I went to the top-ranking free apps, and <laughs> on the number one spot was Instagram, so I tapped the app, read a bit about the description, and it was about sharing your life through imagery, and I was like, okay, well, I'm big into photography, I've been taking photos since I was like 16, um, but I never took a de decent picture with my iPhone, so I was like, okay, that, that will be challenging. So I started creating an account on the app and I started browsing through other people's feeds and I saw people doing things with an iPhone I didn't think were possible. So for me, a challenge was, challenge was born and I started to download all these different photography apps and uh, reading up on some tutorials and I started fiddling around with the tool and with the iPhone and, well, I got the hang of it and I thought, well, I can do this. I can try to gain a following and try to um, share the Netherlands with the predominantly American public on Instagram right then because I was there from like the second week Instagram went live and there weren't too many Dutch people on Instagram yet. So I started looking for um, my own style and, and, and trying to show people what the Netherlands was all about. And then one day I was down this levee, I went down the levee because there was a pond and there was some swans swimming in the pond. So I was like, well, I'm gonna take a picture of those swans. So I walked down the levee, took some pictures of the swans and I turned around and then this scene unfolded. And I was like, well, it doesn't get more Dutch than this. <coughs> So I was like, I'm going to take a picture. I still have my iPhone in hand because, well, the iPhone is always in your pocket, so it's always ready to take a photo. And this one is way too saturated. I don't do stuff like this anymore. But I did really like the angle and the, the thing that it would yeah, maybe spark some thought into people. Where is this guy coming from? Where is he going to? Did he have a nice day? Is he just enjoying the sun on a, a nice bike ride? So I thought, well, this is something <coughs> I really would like to do. Just keep it really simple and try to tell a short story in one frame. So when we went out to the beach with my girlfriend and my two kids, instead of taking pictures of my kids with their spades uh, in the, in the uh, sand, I tried to look for different angles and I came up with stuff like this, you know? And I started uploading them to Instagram and I got this really positive feedback from other mobile photographers I really look up to, uh, people in Spain and America, and they will, were leaving comments like, wow, what you're doing is really something different on Instagram. So I started getting interview requests and people wanted to know more about me and <clears throat> I started to gain a following pretty quickly. And after a, a few months, I was on like 15,000 followers and I was like, whoa, what's happening? This is... I, I'm, I must be doing something right, you know? So, I started looking for more really particularly Dutch things, and fog is a really Dutch thing. Well, it's, it's, it's in more countries, but <laughs> in the Netherlands, in, 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 in autumn and stuff, uh, I, I would go out of bed really early and, and find nice locations. And, and for example, over here, I was like, on the same spot for like 20 minutes or something, waiting for someone to pass by, a bicyclist. And in this case, it was a runner. And again, I think it tells a bit of a story um, about, well, this, this lady who was running over there. And again, I got some really great feedback on it. Um, um, well, again, on the beach in the fog, this is my son. I won some awards with this picture uh, in, in like a mobile photography uh, um, uh, competition. And I started to go back to this levee on a daily basis because I live in The Hague and I work in Amsterdam. So I, I chose to take these detours instead of going through the Avier all the time because that's not really an inspirational place. So I took the back roads. I started taking pictures of cows and, and, and farms and farmers. And I ended up with, with my own unique Dutch style. <coughs> then. 
my followers kept growing, kept growing, and then all of a sudden I was at this magic number of like 100,000 followers. And then the emails started coming in from agencies and brands who wanted to collaborate and work with me and try to see if we can make something work by promoting their brand or products. And I was like, well, I need to make a decision right now. Am I going to allow a promotion of products on my feed and then maybe lose some creative uh, um, um, credibility I built? So I was like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And then one of those emails stood out, which was uh, um, for a, a festival uh, or an organization. Well, no, sorry. There's this thing called Flanders is a festival. And it turns out that in, in Flanders, there are like 360 festivals in 365 days. So almost every day there's a festival. And I wanted to promote this, and I was the first Instagrammer they contacted. They were like, well, maybe you can pick one of the festivals, go to the festival, and share it with your uh, following. One of these um, festivals was Gent Jazz. And yeah, I like jazz, so I was like, well, I'll go to Gent Jazz. And one of the performers was D'Angelo, who was a big hero of mine. I'm not sure everybody knows him, but it's, yeah, it's his real neo-soul classic singer, incredible. So I decided to go, but coming to the event, I was like, well, now I have to take a picture of someone performing in very low light. And everyone who's ever taken a picture with their iPhone or mobile device knows you need lots of light to take a good picture. So I started taking some pictures and I wasn't really happy with the result. And I worked really hard to get to the 100,000 followers by uh, um, building a consistent feed with, with high quality images. And I didn't really like the image and um, how it came out. So I decided not to post the image. But then I felt guilty. I was like, well, they sent me on this trip and they paid everything and I'm not uploading the picture. So I thought, well, well maybe I can just go into Ghent. It, it was in Ghent, it was the day after. And I, I thought, well, I'll go to a museum. I'll, I'll take some pictures of uh, urban scenery. There was this kid playing the violin and the dad holding a, an umbrella because it was raining, so it was a really cute picture. So I started sharing these pictures with, with my followers and then in the comments there were a lot of people like Americans who were planning a Euro trip and then they were tagging other people, hey look at this, this is Gent, uh, when we're going on a Euro trip, why don't we go to Gent as well? So I was like, hey, something is happening over here. So a week later I had a meeting with the agency who sent me over there and they were like, dude, you didn't take any pictures of Gent Jazz. <laughs> and then I had to explain, well, if I would have uploaded this picture, it wouldn't have done well, people wouldn't have responded that well, because it was, it was really grainy and it was ugly. They said, well, we really like what you did with uh, uh, promoting Ghent. So, how would you feel about visiting five more cities in Belgium for us? And we'll pay your expenses. And I was like, that's an idea. I can try to visit cities, countries, and just promote a destination instead of a product or, 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 or a brand. And then the, the idea was born. This is me in the, oh, sorry. This was me in Ghent. I put up a little tripod, and this is the first picture where I thought, well, I can, I can sell this city. I can sell a feeling about the city. And this is where it all started off. And then I, I uh, happened to be one of the first people who started doing uh, uh, destination marketing. So then I got these emails from, would you like to visit Prague? <laughs> sure, I'll visit Prague. <laughs> I, yeah, I could take my girlfriend with me and we visited Prague, we had a great weekend and I just shared some photos with my uh, um, uh, followers. Uh, next thing was uh, Ireland, would you like to come to Ireland? Sure, I'll come to Ireland, yeah. <laughs> I could bring my girlfriend, my two kids. We had the time of our life and all expenses paid, they flew us over there. Mauritius, sure, I'll go to Mauritius, yeah, no problem. <laughs> no problem at all. And then I started thinking, well, it's nice to do these free trips, but people started telling me if these destinations would like to market their place in like a magazine or in a commercial, it costs them tons and tons of money, so you should actually get paid. And I was like, yeah, maybe I should get paid. <laughs> Next thing you know, I get this email from an agent in New York. And this agent in New York had a roster of photographers, but they were regular photogra uh, photographers with regular cameras doing 
uh, editorial stuff and uh, commercial stuff. And he was like, there is going to be a business in this Instagram thing. So I'm going to write all what he thought the best Instagrammers and I'm going to ask him to join my roster. So now I've got an agent in New York who is, yeah, well, who's selling me to his uh, brands and, and I'm working together with the biggest brands ever. And, uh, um, uh, and so I ended up in, in, in Canada and, and, and travel well, really was uh, uh, maybe one of the best things to, um, to show my followers uh, uh, on a day-to-day -day basis what I was uh, uh, visiting and what I was going through and I could write up some little things. And this was on, on like a Wednesday and two days later, the exact same scenery, but it was like a winter landscape, you see? And it was the exact same spot, but just two days later. So you can tell a story during your travels. And this was something that was really working for me. So right now, and next week I'm leaving for Australia, and next month I'm going to Turkey, I'm going to visit Ireland again. So right now I'm, I'm living in the dream, really. It's incredible. And now for a bit of the future of uh, mobile photography. During uh, the storm Sandy, uh, Time magazine uh, equipped their photographers with some mobile phones. They did this for two reasons. One was giving them the possibility to upload the photos to their Instagram stream directly. So you have real time news photography. Of course, you can have eyewitness reports, you can, you can type up a, a lengthy articles about the storm, but it can also be shown in one single picture, like a picture says a thousand words, you know? So this was a big shift in news photography. And they, the, the pictures they took, one of them actually ended up on the cover of Time magazine of that month. So it shows that mobile photography is being accepted even by the big, big media groups. They're all starting to come to Instagram. CNN is on Instagram, Time is on, everybody's on Instagram. And these are some examples of the photos that photojournalists took at the uh, Sandy, uh, during the Sandy storm, which well, yeah, were pretty <laughs> incredible pictures. The guy over there in the canoe, it, it says it all. <clears throat> the second reason they did it was because they were worried about power outages during the storm. What if the power outage would happen? Um, the photojournalist wouldn't be able to, to upload their photo to the news desk. The news desk had to edit them and then put them, but if there would be no power, there was no possibility to send the photos to the news desk. Um, what, what we see happen right now is that during the revolutions in Turkey, Egypt, and uh, uh, lately in Ukraine, you see that the news and the news photography is coming from the people who are in the revolution themselves. So the people who are starting the revolution are also um, uh, creating content for news agencies uh, to use on their websites or in their newspaper. So what you see happening right now is with pictures like this, you see in the comment section at Instagram, you just see uh, news agencies asking for permission to use these photos. I've seen photos from Instagram just created by users on CNN news channel. I've seen them in magazine, I've seen them everywhere. So the revolution will be Instagram. This is something I read somewhere and I think it, it, it does have a point. This one was taken, if you ask me, you, I couldn't tell this wasn't taken by a photojournalist but just by some random person who was in the revolution. So good photography can come from mobile devices as well. This was during uh, uh, the Ukraine uh, uh, riots. Well, it says it all. You see all the, 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 the people in the, uh, on top, and you see the, the army or the police down below. And to, well, to, to end on, on a sort of happy note, even Dalai Lama is starting to find his way to Instagram. So <laughs> there's hope for everybody. Thank you.